Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Orr. We got an update. After week three, Troy Anderson left the game with a shoulder injury. Arthur Smith said after the game, it does not look good, and they fear that he could be lost for the season, which is super unfortunate for, I think, a bigger reason just like Troy Anderson's development. You draft this guy in the second round. He looked like he was playing better at the end of last year. It looked like he was progressing more to start this year. He had some sacks. He had some plays. He obviously left some to be desired in some areas, but he was getting better, and that was kind of what you thought when you drafted a guy who was unproven, basically didn't even play real college football, and was kind of learning based on his athletic traits on the fly at the professional level. You want him to get these reps and become, you know, your starting middle linebacker, your starting guy out there at the second level. And now you might lose him for the season and go into year three with not really knowing what to expect because this guy, Nate Landman, who filled in, like, we'll see if it's a fluke. But if there's one kind of interesting aspect to this that you could look about it positively is we can get to see if this Nate Landman guy is legit, who's an undrafted free agent that the Falcons signed last offseason. Yeah, uh, injury breeds opportunity. They say that in the NFL, and it's very true. Um, what I think is interesting about all this is Arthur Smith rarely, rarely divulges into in injuries uh, or, you know, sheds any kind of light unless he has some definitive, you know, report from the team doctors. And he came out and said, you know, they fear uh, it's season ending. So I think it's safe to assume that it is season ending for Troy Anderson. And I think you nailed it. Uh, it's it's a big deal because you want this kid to succeed. It's his dream. Uh, we want the Falcons to be good. Uh, but more importantly, like you said, we spent a second round pick on this guy. We need him to you know kind of pan out. That's a very that's a premium pick uh, in today's NFL. Uh, and he's losing valuable time. And his biggest biggest weaknesses, from what I have seen, is nothing physical. It's all mental. And the only way that gets better is through reps, through experience. And he's not going to get that. He didn't start last year. He replaced Michael Walker about halfway through the season, a little bit less than halfway through the season. He he was he was the assumed starter next to Caden Ellis uh, coming into the year. This was a very important year for him and a step in his development. Now he's going to lose pretty much a whole year. He's you know played two and a, he played one and a half games because he missed that Green Bay yeah, Packers nice game with a concussion, which Nate Lamon, like to your point, uh, came in and replaced him. And to Nate Lamon's credit, I, I, I'll put my hand up. I was very wrong when they cut Michael Walker in the off season. Uh, I was, I, I was shocked. I was, they waved him. Uh, I was very shocked. I said, there is no, no proven depth behind him. What are we doing? Undrafted free agent. Tay Davis is also more of a special teams guy, though. He has some uh, experience. It's not that much. Nate Lamon has virtually none. Nate Lamon came in and he not only held his own, I mean, he made some plays in the run game. Sure, you know, pass coverage for a lot of linebackers is the one area of weakness for nearly every single one. Uh, but he made a lot of plays in in that Packers game where I like kind of took a de took a step back and said, "Okay, maybe this guy can play." And now he's got the opportunity to prove, like you said, that this is not a fluke. Yeah, I mean, and then just taking it a step forward before we are like a step further, like talking about these. Falcons draft picks uh, and then yeah. you you kind of are worried like oh does he miss this year how is he going to look next year and then all of a sudden you're going into year four if he doesn't really develop that much and you're like did the Falcons waste another one of their top draft picks I mean listen Richie Grant you saw him make that huge miscue he hasn't really shown anything special by any means uh, at the safety position then you got Troy Anderson you already released Jalen Mayfield that first draft class the back half of it is already di almost completely dissipated Avery Williams, one of your shining spot in that first draft class, tore his ACL. And you start looking at these draft classes that the Falcons stacked up and like, listen, injuries are part of the game. But, you know, it's – and then don't even get me started. Don't even get me started on the first round picks, Drake London and Kyle Pitts, because you ain't using them. Yeah, let's um, go a step further. Arnold Abiquete, you know, you bring in Ryan Nielsen, who is more of a 4-3 under kind of base where he has those big defensive ends, Calais Campbell. Guess who's coming in for Calais Campbell? Zach Harrison. Third round rookie, not Arnold Ebiketti, who you traded up for in the second round. Yeah, D'Angelo Malone hasn't got a single snap this year on defense. Yeah, the draft draft class is uh, question marks. Yeah, I mean, 
the free agent classes, I guess those are the things that you can say yeah. that like, and that was what Terry Fontenot was a lot known for, especially, but even the big name free agents, David Onyemata, we've talked about him, Caden Ellis, Jesse Bates, all three of those guys that were signed on the first uh, wave of free agents, that first day of free agency have looked the part and been looked like slam dunks. And obviously he's found some diamonds in the roughs like Cordell Patterson over his time. But those free those draft classes, that's what's going to determine whether this Falcons has long term success, especially the guys after the first round. And if you start to look at these guys and really start to give them, you know, harsh grades, it's not pretty. There's not a lot of A's out there and there's not, there's there's not even a lot of B's out there. And no. you start to wonder, uh, you know, I, it's it's not great. And especially Desmond Ritter doesn't pan out. There's another third round pick. It's just it's it's starting to tumble. It's starting to tumble where you're like. Can these guys draft? Do we trust these guys in the draft? Because you've had top draft picks in each round and you're not making the most of them. That's a problem. And that's going to be an even bigger problem in the future. Coming up after the break, Desmond Ritter. Is it too early to start talking QB change?